Hello and welcome to another Godot tutorial. Today I would like to speak about the topic finite state machine. So I would like to show you my approach of a finite state machine in GD script and how I use it. It is a very basic system and a very easy approach, but I will show you how you can extend it. I was asked a lot to cover this topic. So here I am and let us check out why we need a finite state machine at all. So this is my, an example code of why we use a finite state machine or we should use a state machine at all. If you are new to programming or to even game development, maybe your code is looking like this. So you have a, a lot of states like is falling, is jumping, is invulnerable, is running. And you always check in your update method something like uh, if, if it's falling, I do that for code and have a return there. If it's jumping, I do that of code and have a return here. The main problem with that is the update function gets quite big and uh, the readability is not that good. And for each state you have uh, always new flags and new booleans and so on. So in this case, we would like to have a finite state machine at all. I would like to show you in my code how, how I approach it. Even my approach is now a very, very simple one and isn't that much uh, different to this code. What I use instead is I have a enumerator of uh, different states. So my character has an idle state, a walking state, an attacking state, a one together state, a gathering state, a crafting state and a storing state. Then I have a variable of my character which stores the current state, so the actual state. Um, it starts with the idle state and what I now do is I have the physics process function and in my physics process function I match the state and in case of what state we have I execute different functions here. As said it's a very basic approach for that here. You could do it much much more object orientated. So instead of uh, doing the match case here you could just store a complete state. As said this is a very basic approach for this state and it's uh, more or less the same like we saw on the page before but it already is a bit better to read because we have the match with the different states. We have our functions where we can do different stuff and so we have a much better readability in our code. What we also need is a function where we switch our state. Yeah we have a state switching state and here the state is switched. We can also do some kind of uh, signals here something like state after changed and could give the state and then we could connect to the signal and we could of course, of course also do something like state before changed and then we have the old state here. So in this case we could register everything we want to these both signals and we could execute some functions before we say change the state and after we change the state. This could be cool if we have something like uh, we want to gather a hit and now we want to store the old state or we have a special animation for that etc. So if we change the state we can then match in the process function as I shown above which state we have and then do everything we need for that. S something like play all the sounds play the animations which are needed or change anything which you need in the code. This is a very basic approach for the state machine and this is how you should maybe start with it if you haven't done already. And now I would like to show you a more advanced approach. I just wrote this small script to show you the more advanced way which is a bit more object orientated. So if you would like to have a state machine which is better written itself you would go something like that. So we have our character right here. He has still some kind of a variable for the actual state. And instead of just having a state which is describing in which state we are, we are giving the state a complete object which is knowing how to handle itself. So in this case I wrote a small move state. So we start with the move state and in our physics process uh, the state is updated every frame. So we just call the state update function, handle the update with the delta state here and then we can do something in the move state class so like we have in the update we can do the walking, playing the sound, showing the direction and so on. And also we have the switch state function in our character 
where we set the new state to the state variable of course and we can also call the enter function which is basically uh, called once the state is entered by the, ch by the character so we can set up the initial walking animation or reset anything else what needs to be done. With this approach we have the possibility to extend our system with even more states something like this so we could just add an attack and so we have another state we can now switch while we are attacking or something like that and then we can enter the attack state and our classes are handling itself if you need more than that you can of course extend it so for example we could add an exit function which is uh, basically called when the state is exited so if we have a switch state we can do something like the old state is exit here then we give the new state and then on the new state the enter function is called basically we could do something like that it's the same so in this case it's the old state the exit function is called then we assign the new state to the state and then we call the enter state and so we have an enter of the state where we can set the walking animation etc and we have an exit where you maybe want to do something like to play a sound or whatever you can do whatever you want this one is called when exiting the state so we have the possibility here to do something when the state is exiting. Yeah, usually you have the, the update or something where you can do the update and you maybe also want something like handle the input. Yeah, it can be also quite handy to have this one if you want to have something like function in our character. We have function unhandled input event and then we can do state handle input and we can give the event passing it through course we have to add the event as a parameter here yes and in this case we now have four very basic functions we can yeah we call them in our code and um, if we would like to do that now in other files we could of course yeah. move this code to own files then our character script would just have these three functions and we could handle our input handle update exit and enter on our different states and now we are able to create multiple different states so for example we could have a move state in idle state in attacking state in falling state in hitting state and dying state whatever you want to have for your character you could even use this finite state machine for any object it hasn't to be a character it could be also some kind of enemy which has move states and idle state and this is uh, the very very cool stuff if you have one state and it's always uh, the move state is always handling in the same way for your character for example you have some walking which is handled like the, with the input and for enemies you could do the input by yourself and you have just the walking in your state and then you could extend from your move state and could do something like input move state or automatic move state whatsoever and then you could abstract your your states and have different states and could just use them for all your objects in game so this approach is very very cool and handy and it saves a lot of work and you could reuse it in very yeah in, in very different stages I will also update my character script I showed you first with my basic approach to this one. It's already in my backlog and I think I will have uh, a bit of time this week to uh, change it to a more object oriented approach for the state machine. So if you are not familiar with that, just try it. It saves a lot of work and it is very cool if you are just into it. Just check it out. I hope it helped you and I hope uh, that was something you would like to know or you could learn something new. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, leave an upvote if you like the video and also please, please check out my Patreon. I need to pay my bills somehow and this is my own, this is my single income at the moment and that's not very, very much. So please help me to make a living of my full-time indie dev and I hope to see you within the next video. Bye.